All right. So here you see we ha we have two objects on here. But you see, I, I grab the ruler and I pull the line over. Now I'm going up and grabbing from this ruler. I'm pulling a line down. Now if I go into the almost corner, I can pull diagonals. You see that? Okay. So very easy. Let's let's uh, uh, let's do this real quick. Go up to this and pull down a guy. Whoops. Pull it. Pull it. Pull it. I'm just pulling guides down. The little circle, when I go on the guide and I'm actually on the guide, it's red. I can move that. I can move that line. That line is how I can adjust things. All right? So I have to, sometimes these little circles get in the way and you have to move the circle on the line. Now, if you do, double click on it, all right, here's your precision guide. So if I want this, this is a horizontal line. Uh, okay, well, we're not set in inches yet. But let's it <coughs> okay, let's say I wanted to set it at um, five inches. Uh, it would go, and I could hit OK, and it would hit the five inches. Now, in this case, because we haven't set up the page yet, it's still in pixels. But we're going to do that next. All right. So the things to know is you can precisely position a guide. Right. Okay. So a grid. A grid is just what it looks like. It's a series of points in a matrix. You know, X, Y coordinates. Uh, spaced equally typically, but they don't have to be equally spaced. And those can be used to snap to. And if you do that, generally you only allow to yourself to snap to places that are on the grid. All right. We, because this is going to be so elementary, we won't use a grid. And I'll show you how powerful not using a grid can be. Okay? All right. Snap. What are we talking about snap? Well, if if you have a, uh, say that, one of those guides, when I get, and I have my object, this is my circle, when I get to a certain point, it will snap to the edge of that guide if I have it set up right. Okay? Now that is very powerful. And we're going to be using that quite a bit. Okay? Okay. Okay, here's first things that first, okay? These are some things that I, I recommend that we, you do. All right. Uh, one, let's uh, open up file document properties, which is up on the file. When I do this, that means the file menu item and then the, the sub-menu item document properties. If you want to set the default measurement unit, I usually set it to inches. A lot of people like to set it in metric. Okay, but personally, I set it in inches because um, I'm too far <coughs> wired that way. Okay. Now, since a lot of what I'm doing, if I'm doing something for the laser, I will change the page size to uh, a width of 12 inches and a height of 11 inches. Now, the actual maximum cutting for our laser is 12.75 and 11. The reason why I do 12 and 11 is because if I typically buy material in a two foot by four foot section, and if I take 24 inches and I cut through it, you know, and I have two 12 inch pieces minus the kerf, and then, you know, I just slice it up into 11 inches, and then I'll end up at the end, I'll have a little four inch piece. I can use all of that material. So that's why I recommend that page settings. Uh, we change the shape attributes. Okay, the biggest one that you want to change is. Uh, you want to change the fill and stroke default attributes so that there's no fill and no stroke. And the stroke is either one pixel, I usually use one pixel, and since we'll be in units, it will, it will convert itself to this, to this number later on. All right? And then I also uncheck the scale width, uh, scale stroke width um, uh, option under the transform. We'll, we'll, we'll do that just now. The reason why you do this 
is because if you change the shape of an object, and this is not unchecked, then the, the stroke will actually become bigger or smaller depending on how you make the sign. And you don't really want that. You want the stroke to always be the same size, which is Nailed. small. Yeah. Now, uh, so, so you want to make sure that that's un un unchecked. Now, you often have to do this every time you open up a machine with Inkscape on it. It doesn't seem to be really sticky. Now, I don't know why. I, there's probably a, oh, oh, here's an answer. There's a way to change the defaults on it, so every time you open up a new document it does that. There's a, a file called default dot something or another in the Inkscape directory. Okay. And you open that up in a text editor and, and change it. Okay. Um, so there is a way to do it. I knew there had to be, but I, yeah. just, or, but, you know, I, I just hadn't found it yet. Actually, not a text. You actually open the file in Inkscape and you set the document properties and you set it and okay. save it. And then next time you do a new file, it'll, it'll open. Okay. Uh, All right. So anyway. These are the changes we're going to do. All right, so uh, we're going to go go do that. Okay, so first we're going to modify the, the document settings. So that's under File. You go down to Document Properties. And under the page, you have one, the default units. Set that to, in my case, I'm going to set everything to inches, guys. I'm sorry. And then down here, I'm going to set uh, page size to inches. And I'm going to make the uh, width 12 and the height 11. So we said we would do. Okay. Now, you just close that. Okay, and that's that. Now, the next step we're going to do is we're going to go down to the Inkscape. Uh, well, okay, this one's a little tricky, guys. Let me get rid of these guys. Okay, so the best thing that I've found is find out where you are. So I usually uh, draw a square, since I often use square, and I, I can tell you that it's already. Since it's my computer, it's already set up to have fill equals zero, and, and, and but but let's let's okay. So I create the two objects. Then I go into the filed thing, uh, filed uh, menu item, and go down to Inkscape preferences. Okay, and then under the shapes, I open up the shapes. I go to rectangle, and it says, okay, create new objects with the last used uh, style, which is be okay, but uh, I frequently just say take from the selection. Just I would just hit take from selection here. Then I would go to the eclipse, which, is, which you use, what's the circle one? Ah, okay, so this one's, this one's got, well, right now I'm using the last style, which is what is okay, but if I wanted to permanently to change this, what I could do is I could hit, uh, I would go into here, well, give me a second, well, hang on, I would select my uh, circle, go up to here, get my escape preferences, it's still there. And I would take from the selection. Now, did you see what it did? It changed it. All right. And it would always, now it will always use that, at least in this document. <laughs> okay? Yeah. All right. Now, the other one that you want is down here in this transforms. It's this top button right here, scale stroke width. You want to close that or uncheck that. And those are the start things that you need to do to start off with. Okay? Get rid of these guys. And again, so if you want this to stick, open up the default .svg file and set the properties, preferences, and whatnot, save right. that. Now, where would the default? Where does that come into play? When you do um, file, new. file new, see the default on the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, That's and he's saying if you have a change there okay. on that document then it will be, every time you click on it, 
it will be changed. Yeah. And that makes sense. Yeah, the files in share templates, the bulk of SVG. Huh? Uh, share templates. Share file. templates, okay. All right, so there we go, guys. An improvement already. Now, all right. Okay, important, important commands. It turns out you spend most of your time either on the toolbar that's on the left, making select or circles or squares, okay? That's where you spend all your tool time. But if you look at on the menus, where do you spend your time? It's up here in, you're either in edit, object, or path. The edit, I've underlined some of the uh, very important ones. The most important <coughs> one is that undo button. It has a very robust undo, and thank God it does, because you will be using it. Um, like I say, the copy and paste. But you also notice there's duplicate, duplicate, and clone, which are other ones that we'll be using. And you say, man, that sounds like kind of complicated, but we're going to touch on that later. All right, now, the second one, and, and so besides when you're not copying, and pasting, or undoing, you're going to be either in the object or the path. In the object, there's dialog boxes for all of these commands that will open up and that you can put on that docking station that I said on the side. Uh, fill, and put, uh, fill and stroke uh, is not as, because you can do it on the bottom of the interface, it's not as important, but there are some things you can do there. Uh, uh, the, the next group is the group and ungroup, very important commands, and raise to the top of the <coughs> stack and take to the bottom of the stack, very important commands. Uh, the rotate commands are actually on the control toolbar and you'll probably use those instead of coming here. All right, now these bottom, next two, transform and align and distribute. You will spend a lot of time in align and distribute. And you'll also be, if you're doing anything that's rotating things, you'll be in the transform. And you'll see that when we actually do, do a project. Then the other one, the path command, some important ones are object to path. Now that's where you take an object. And an object, a closed object, like a circle, has a path. Okay? Uh, but like text is an object, doesn't necessarily have a path. But you can make it have a path. Alright. Uh, trace bitmap, that's when you're going to bring in pictures and turn them into uh, you're going to try to you're going to try to outline them and use them to uh, be a, uh, a vector. Um, so that's one thing you can use. You can bring in uh, bitmaps or ping files and actually put them in in Inkscape. Uh, these commands have to do with uh, they're often called the binary functions, but they're really kind of uh, the heart of a lot of the things that you can do with two objects. Uh, some of them are very easy to understand, like union. You take an object and an object and you put them over top of each other and you hit union and now they become one object. Okay, That's real kind of, kind of, kind of easy to understand. Some of them, uh, like uh, division, uh, are a little more nuanced, I should say. All right, and we're going to go through some of these, but I want to get to those projects I was telling you about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you these things very quickly, but don't get hung up on them. The ones that we typically that you're going to be using the most will be union and difference. Okay. Those are the ones you'll probably use 50 to 60 percent of the time. The other ones are important. You need to learn them, okay? Because you will, if you have two objects and you want to do something with them, you can probably use one of these tools to do it. But you've got to figure out what you're doing, okay? All right. Okay, so all of the next steps start off with two objects. A red square with a blue circle that's where on the stack? The top. The top. top. Okay. That's why I see the whole blue circle yeah. and only part of the red rectangle. Okay. 
Okay, so a union. I've got my little thing over there in the corner, and it turns into one object. Now, look at the fill. What fill did it take? Five. It took the lower, the lower object. The fill. Okay. All right. Now a difference. It just cut off the part that the circle overlapped. Okay. Easy. Okay. Intersection. That's where they overlapped. You remember, it's still taking that bottom, so order is important. Okay, exclusion is the opposite of intersection. It left everything but where they overlapped. All right, now this also did something else. It retained the path. There's a command we can use later called break apart. And it will break this apart so that these could be, I could have a, this shape and I could have this shape. Okay. All right. Now we come in. So how does it break things apart? We come into an idea here. I want to just touch on. I'll let you know. When a path has two parts that are, aren't 